Well, let's talk about Canada. Let's head up to our friends to the north and talk about what's happening in Canada because we're getting some troubling data out today about the number of doctor-assisted suicides in Canada have skyrocketed under Trudeau's leadership. This is Trudeau's legacy. And now prisoners are tapping into the law there in order to leave prison early, if you know what I mean, by using this MAID program, the assisted death program. Check out. Check out early of prison. We'll get to that part of the story in a minute, but first some context here. So in March of 2021, the Trudeau government in Canada passed the Medical Assistance in Dying Act, known as MAID. Under the law, you don't have to have a fatal condition, of course, or, or a terminal condition. In fact, under the law, you could just be poor and want to kill yourself. So you don't really have to have any reason other than that. Uh, and they've been helping people do that. You're too poor to pay your bills? Well, why not just check out? It's time to check out. You could also have a mental illness. That will qualify you if you want to as well. Be depressed, want to kill yourself. You can do all of that. And the law allows doctors to help you do it gladly. Since the law was passed, medically assisted deaths rose by 35%. And this is the most recent data from 2020 to 2021. I, we're still waiting on the updated data because I bet it's going to be shocking. Medically assisted deaths in Canada rose by 35% from 2020 to 2021. Why is that exactly? Well, why have they skyrocketed? Well, could it be maybe the television advertising campaigns? Like you're sitting there watching a ball game. You're like, I'm feeling pretty depressed. And then a television commercial comes on like this, kind of encouraging, you know, you know, you've been pretty depressed lately. Why not you just, you know, check out, watch. Last breaths are sacred. When I imagine my final days, I see bubbles. I see the ocean. I see music. Even now, as I seek help to end my life, there is still so much beauty. You just have to be brave enough to see it. So she's no longer with us. And uh, now the rise in medically assisted suicides, according to this data, may partially be explained, according to this report, by a greater awareness of MAID as an end of life option in Canada. You think? There's the, television ads. These numbers are kind of shocking because you would think that there would be a higher rate of rejection. Um, because when you look, it says t about 12,000 requests for MAID resulting in over 10,000 medically assisted deaths in the same year. So there's not a high rejection rate no, at no. all. You just write in and you get it. Uh, that's over 81% approval rating for, for when you sign up for this an 81% acceptance rate, 81%. And which we'll get to some data here in a second, which is even perhaps more shocking. The CBC, which is the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation is also littered with propaganda articles if you go to their website, you can find plenty of them promoting the MAID program. This would be like America's PBS, you know, home of Sesame Street. Same thing, CBC, PBS, basically. Um, publishing articles promoting assisted suicide. Here's one from a few weeks ago, or maybe like more like NPR, I suppose. Uh, here's one from a few weeks ago complaining about the delays in rolling out the mental health provision in Canada, where people without any fatal disease can ask to be put to death. So here's the CBC basically saying patients left frustrated amid delays to access assisted dying. Those seeking may because of a mental illness have to wait until at least 2024 for that to roll out. Now look at this photo that they used in the article and look at the hand, right? That hand has a finger, which is in, or there's like a, what, what do you call it? A, uh, uh, uh an, an, IV. an IV in the arm, right? So this person is in the hospital. Yeah. Right. Well, that's not what the article's about. The article's about mental illness has nothing to do with an old person in the hospital with an IV. So what they're, they're even using propaganda photos. And even if you read the under part of that photo, many Canadians who suffer from a, a mental illness that their doctors have been unable to successfully treat have had to wait for medical assistance in dying as the government delays made expansion. That's not what this is. This person isn't here in a hospital with an IV because they're depressed, they're there because they're elderly and they've got some affliction. Sure. So this is the this is the propaganda that the CBC is using to drum up uh, sympathy for these people. And and it's specifically talking about people with mental illness. Yeah, that's what these delays are for. So and that's so what the article is specifically about: mental illness. 
and those who would get the, you know, get uh, assisted suicide later on because of this program. That their doctor, and, and I'm troubled by the phrase, have been unable to successfully treat um, because by many measures, a mental illness can persist in, in a lot of kind of ways that you can't slap a metric on. So you can say like, you may never feel better. Right. Therefore, right. Right. And so what are the, what are the way that we're, we're defining success here? Yeah. Like we, we've tried all the medicine, we've tried all the antidepressants. We just haven't been able to treat you. So time to check out. We've even covered the new, the eugenics program on this show the new eugenics program. Many people wrongly believe that the government assisted uh, eugenics program ended after World War II, and it didn't. It's alive and well with just a bit of rebranding in 2023. As we've talked about on this show, this all has its roots in Malthusian policies. Thomas Malthus was an English cleric who believed in population control, the idea that the world can't handle so many people. There's Thomas Malthus. It gave rise to the eugenics program. In the early part of last century, the American eugenics movement embraced negative eugenics with the goal to, to eliminate undesirable genetic traits in the human race through selective breeding. This was literally a government program in the United States. Basically, the United States would push you off into camps where you would be sanitized, killed off, never to breed again. PBS has a, actually, speaking of PBS, they actually have a whole documentary about the eugenics program back in the day. You should seek it out if you want to see it. The World Economic Forum loves this. And of course, Trudeau is one of Klaus Schwab's young protégés. So of course he's in on this. Today we learned that the funeral homes in Canada are also getting in on this business. This is amazing. So you don't even have to bring the body in separately. It's just all right there. It's just efficiency. It is really, it is. Look at this. This is the headline from another CBC article. And they're really pushing this tough on cbc.com or .ca. Quebec Funeral Home offers space for families to gather and say goodbye at assisted deaths. This is yet another CBC article promoting assisted suicides in Canada. In Quebec, you can use the back room of the funeral homes. And then, of course, the funeral home can make money off of the process, too. Like, you're already here. Are you going to go to another funeral home for your embalming services? You just died in my funeral home. So it's kind of like, um, I mean, you don't want a, like a software, dead person it's, it's like to put a carbon footprint on the, you know, yeah. if I have to drive you from the hospital to the grave site, then, yeah. you know, it's wasting. It's like software as a service. Like once you become the software provider, like someone else is not going to go out and like find another so like they've got it right. So like right. it's lock in, it's yeah. like money lock in the body is already here. So they're going to make money off of it. And it's all neat and tidy right there inside the building. They even sent a CBC reporter to the funeral home to see the room where it happens. Watch this. Welcome. Follow me. Funeral homes have been in Mathieu Baker's family for generations, but he recently expanded the kind of service he offers. So this is the room where you have the medical aid in dying? Yes, this is, this is where it, uh, it happens. People who are approved for medical assistance in dying can come here with their doctor and loved ones to end their lives at a cost of at least $700. It's a lot of uh, organization uh, on, on our part to, to really make it a respectful and uh, meaningful event for, the, for that family. It's what Michel Brunel recently opted for. His family says he had emphysema and his quality of life had deteriorated, but he didn't want to die at home or in the hospital. They're using a room that they have already, uh, decorated it very nicely, uh, allowed us the time we needed to do what we had to do, to say goodbye, let him get comfortable. Uh, it's, just, it's just a beautiful option. Yeah, it's just a beautiful option. So if that's not enough, now prisoners are being asked, they're, or they're asking to be put to death under this law. So it's kind of, it reminds me of the trans stories we've been covering here on the show, right? Where these, these um, men who are like violent criminals, mm -hmm. they're like, you know what? Suddenly I'm a woman. I want to go to a woman's prison. Yes. And then they're granted that wish. They get to go to a woman's prison after they violate, you know, that's. Oh, not only that, in the state of Minnesota, to this over the weekend, uh, an inmate had won a lawsuit, won almost a half a million dollars from discriminatory practices, what he says the state of Minnesota was guilty of. And so they have to pay him that. 
They have to move him to the woman's prison and they have to give him a vaginoplasty <laughs> on, on the state's dime. So you're, you're paying. So Minnesota, you're paying. If you live in Minnesota, you're paying for an inmate, a violent criminal. Uh, no, it's um, he was guilty of, I think, a drug crime or a felony of okay. money or something like that. But even still, like we're supposed to not castrate prisoners. We're, we're supposed to not be doing that. But I guess if they identify as a woman, we can castrate them just fine. Oh, my God. Right. So back to Canada, because the United States is already a failing state. Let's talk Canada, which is right there with them. So here's the article again. The number of medically assisted deaths in Canada's prisons, a concern for some experts. I love this. It's a concern for some experts. You know, maybe one person is asking a, a tough question. You and didn't that, see that one coming? That person is Jennifer Shaw, by the way, who should be commended for asking these questions. Um, the number of federal prisons requesting medically assistance in dying under the MAID program in Canada has increased. 27 asking for permission now uh, since June 2016 when the legislation came into effect and Mar and March 31st of, la of this year. According to this information provided by the Correctional Services of Canada, the CSC, following an access to an information act request. So like their freedom of information act request in Canada, they didn't make this information public. It was only after Jennifer Shaw pushed them on it to get answers because she says there's not enough transparency here. Like we don't know who's being put to death in prison. And yet here's Canada, which in 1998 abolished the death penalty. Do you see a problem here? They, they abolished the death penalty and they've, in fact, they struck it from all of their literature. Every piece of like government documents, the words death penalty have been removed. Which is but interesting now you can put because people, to death. people who oppose the death penalty say that there is no humane way to assist death because we see it get botched when it happens in prison systems in the United States where this, this medicine didn't work, they couldn't get the right thing, they yeah. were comfortable, they were, you know, seizing and suffering as they were dying for hours at a time. So why are we being told that there is just a nice, quiet, peaceful way to go? You just quietly take the medicine for some, and then in other stories we're being told it's not possible to do humanely. Right, yeah, it's painful, they botch it, there's, yeah, it's, it's awful. But on top of it, like who, the, well, here's the, here's one big piece of this, right? The mental, the, the mental illness piece of this for, 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 um, for, for prisoners. So it's, this is interesting. They say that those in Canada specifically, according to the data that over 75%, I believe the exact number, 75% of those in prison in Canada are considered to have a mental illness. Yeah. So they're, they're almost already all qualified. So if you're trying to like argue against this, you'd be, you wouldn't be able to argue against it because the data is on the side of the people who want to be able to put these people to death. Well, it doesn't seem like there's a high rejection rate anyway. No, but it's according to Jessica Shaw, who did this, you know, investigation to try to find out it's only slightly lower in prisons. Like there's a little bit of a rejection rate, but they're not even clear. She's, they can't even, they won't even share the data on why they're rejecting these people. Like what specifically are you rejecting about the people that you did reject? You won't tell us. How long till we find out that someone didn't really want this in prison? <laughs> that's what I want to, yes. That's the real question. Because are they doing this to free up space? You know, or, I mean, who knows, right? But again, we don't know because they or won't release. Or falsifying documents like, oh no, you know, John here, he really wanted to be put to death. But he's not alive anymore we, to yeah. answer. We can't talk he to John. He on the dotted line, you know. Is that his signature? We sure. don't know. Go sure check his, yeah, go check his cell. He probably wrote his name all over the wall. We don't know, but we need to, we have a, wait, how long until this happens in the United States? There's already laws in the works in the United States for this as well. So the United States has a massive prison overcrowding population problem. So how soon until this rolls into the United States? Right. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, I don't I don't know that we'll see that because the because of the for profit prisons aren't gonna want to get rid of prisoners. So that's they, true. If, you, if they tried to if they tried to do that in the US, the, the like they would be lobbying the hell out of that. Like no way. No 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 keep no. them there forever. No no you know what they should do? What they should do is in the United States what they'll do is they'll add these private rooms like they had at the funeral home. They'll just build funeral homes into the prisons in the United States. Mm -hmm. So it'll be one stop shopping right inside there. Yeah. Inside the jails and prisons. That's all they need to do. Go to the room and here's the room where it happened. Canada. Boy. Justin Trudeau. 
<laughs> You've lost your minds. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.